Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Isaiah Eckhart Frank. Isaiah earned his bachelor's in chemistry from McAllister College in 2020. He subsequently came to UNC Chapel Hill to pursue his PhD in the group of Professor Sidney Wilkerson Hill. Today he's going to be sharing with us the story behind one of his recent publications in Jex. And from there, I'll let you get started, Isaiah. Thanks a lot for coming on today. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for the opportunity to share my work on this platform. I'm really excited to be sharing some of the palladium catalyzed cross coupling reactions I've been working on while in the Hill Group at UNC. Within the Hill Group at UNC Chapel Hill, we have a particular interest in the synthesis of strain rings because of how they occupy three dimensional space. One way that we have to describe the three dimensional topology of molecules is through the use of exit vectors, which are a way to describe the orientation of substituents off of a molecular scaffold. In a simple aryl system, we see that substituents can only be in the plane of the aryl, but we can increase vectorization through biaryl linkages or sp3 atoms, such as with cycloalkanes. However, there can be a large degree of conformational flexibility depending on the scaffold. Strained rings allow for rigid, well-defined exit vectors but have limited vectorization, while spirocycles containing strained rings combine the well-defined exit vectors of strained rings with the increased opportunities for vectorization due to the spirocyclic ring fusion. For example, if we consider piperazine and its spirocyclic analog, homospiropiperazine, we can see that for piperazine, substituents off of the nitrogen atoms would occupy the same zy plane. When we introduce a spirocyclic ring fusion, we generate orthogonal vectors, as shown by substituents off of the nitrogen atoms in homospiropiperazine, now occupying the zy and xy planes, while maintaining a similar distance between the nitrogen atoms when compared to piperazine. This strategy allows for fine-tuning of the orientation of substituents for vector optimization, which can be leveraged to pre-organize substituents to maximize binding in complex biological contexts, such as in the active site of an enzyme. Classical strategies to obtain these strange spirocyclic systems often rely on substitution chemistry, whereby you can imagine a ring-closing event on either end of the ring system in order to afford these motifs. However, while robust and scalable, it can be very difficult to generate a library of these compounds due to their linear syntheses. However, more recently, the Fletcher, Tortosa, and Brown groups have developed more modern catalytic methods to access pyrocyclic cyclobutanes through alkene difunctionalization reactions that leverage the innate reactivity of cyclobutanes to afford cis-functionalized pyrocyclic cyclobutanes. However, we wanted to take an approach that combined a ring forming event with a palladium catalyzed cross coupling step and identified three main challenges that we might encounter in the development of this strategy. First, the cyclization event could afford either a four or five membered ring product. Secondly, starting materials may be subject to thermal or catalytic rearrangements, decreasing reaction efficiency. And third, our desired spirocyclic products may be degraded under reaction conditions due to the thermodynamic driving force of relieving ring strain. Nonetheless, we were inspired by a few groups that have leveraged palladium catalyzed cyclizations in the synthesis of cyclobutanes. The first of which being the Brizza group in 1999, where they were able to afford the intended palladium catalyzed cyclization through the use of bis enol nonoflates. The Molzer group in 2007 and the Wolf group in 2022 and 2023 were able to afford similar cyclizations through the use of enol triflates, which would then be trapped by beta hydride elimination carbonylation, or nucleophilic addition after cyclization. We wanted to build off of this precedent and employ a tandem aryl cross-coupling reaction and cyclization in order to access the desired spirocycles containing cyclobutanes. Building off foundational work by Barluenga, Valdez, and Jambo Wang, as well as previous work in the group, we identified alkene tethered hydrozones as suitable reagents to achieve our intended cross-couple cyclization cascade. In 2022, our group reported the use of alkeno hydrozones for the synthesis of vinyl cyclopropanes and their ring opened 1,4-diene isomers. Through the course of that study, we discovered that selectivity for the ring closed versus ring opened isomers was dictated by aryl substitution, aryl electronics, hydrozone substitution, and the ligand. We wanted to use what we learned in that previous study to design a system that favored the ring closed isomer as well as address needs for the synthesis of spirocyclic cyclobutanes. Through the use of crotal substituted hydrozones, which are readily synthesized from commercial starting materials, 
we would be able to continue to study the nature of palladium carbenes in cross-coupling reactions and use mechanistic understandings from our previous study to design a platform for the modular synthesis of trans spirocyclic cyclobutanes. In our proposed reaction, palladium-0 undergoes oxidative addition with an aryl bromide. This palladium-2 intermediate will then engage an in-situ-generated unstabilized diazo through the thermal decomposition of the hydrozone reagent under basic conditions. Following extrusion of dinitrogen, we arrive at a palladium carbene intermediate. The aryl group on palladium will then undergo a 1-2 shift into the carbene, which affords a neopenthyl palladium species, which will then cyclize on the pendant alkene via syncarbopalladation. The resulting cyclobutyl carbinyl palladium species will then undergo beta hydride elimination to afford the desired product and reductive elimination to regenerate the catalyst. However, we were surprised to see that the proposed palladium carbene intermediate also facilitates a 1,3 allylic CH insertion reaction to afford a vinyl cyclopropane without aryl incorporation, which was a competing process in this reaction. With our proposed reaction in hand, we began reaction optimization and settled on one equivalent of aryl bromide, two equivalents of hydrozone, palladium DBA2 as a precatalyst, rufos as a ligand, and lithium terputoxide as the base and toluene at 50 degrees C for 48 hours. We found that more polar solvents decreased reaction yield and product selectivity, and heating to 80 for two hours decreased both reaction yield and product selectivity, favoring CH insertion. Additionally, we found that bidentate ligands such as RAC BINAP did not promote the reaction, and that two equivalents of the hydrozone reagent were needed in order to form good yields of the cross-coupled product. Some of the key takeaways that we found in reaction optimization were that while the CH insertion product was formed in all cases, it was readily separable by column chromatography or volatile from many of the other hydrozone reagents that we synthesized. We also found that the low reaction temperature was required for achieving high diastereoselectivity and that monodentate biaryl dialkyl phosphines were crucial for the success of the reaction. Having optimized our reaction conditions on 2 bromonaphthalene, we began investigating the scope of the reaction with regard to aryl bromide coupling partner. We found that electron-rich and electron-poor Paris substituted aryl bromides coupled well in the reaction, forming the desired spirocyclic cyclobutanes in good yields and high diastereoselectivities up to greater than 20 to 1, favoring the trans isomer. When we increased sterics with an orthomethyl group, we took a hit to the overall yield and diastereoselectivity, but we could readily incorporate CF3 groups, and a methylene dioxyphenyl group with which we were able to confirm the relative stereochemistry through single X-ray crystallography with the help of Dr. Josh Chen in the UNC X-ray crystallography core. We could also incorporate electron-rich and electron-poor heteroaryl bromides, including pyridines and benzothiazoles in high yields and high diastereoselectivities, again up to greater than 20 to 1. If we want to change the group on our cyclobutanes, we simply need to synthesize a new reagent, which can be done from commercially available alpha-alpha disubstituted esters or nitriles. Following alkylation, we can subject the esters or nitriles to a reduction oxidation condensation sequence, which can afford our hydrozone reagents in three to four steps in good yields with one column or recrystallization after the final step on up to 10 gram scale. We can readily cross-couple a tetrahydropyran-derived hydrozone in good yield and diastereoselectivity, but see decreased efficiency when using a cyclopentane-derived hydrozone, presumably due to increased strain in the cyclization step. When we increase the ring size back to six and seven-membered carbocycles, we see improved yields and maintain high diastereoselectivities up to greater than 20 to 1. We found we could also incorporate diethyl substituents, albeit in lower yield, but again in high diastereoselectivity. When thinking about our proposed mechanism, we noticed that the cyclobutyl carbinyl palladium intermediate derived from the crotal hydrozone actually has two sites which can undergo beta hydride elimination, the methyl group and the cyclobutyl methine. However, whenever the methyl group is present, palladium will preferentially undergo beta hydride elimination there in order to afford vinyl cyclobutanes. We proposed that if we were able to remove the methyl group, the reaction with an owl substituted hydrozone, the only site where palladium can undergo beta hydride elimination will be off of the cyclobutane, yielding alkylidine cyclobutanes from the same reaction setup. 
We then synthesized an owl substituted hydrozone and found that through slight adjustment of the reaction conditions by increasing the temperature to 80 degrees C, we could facilitate the more difficult beta hydride elimination and afford the desired alkylidine cyclobutane and good yields favoring the cross-coupled product over CH insertion. We then synthesized a library of owl substituted hydrozone reagents and subjected them to our adjusted conditions and found that through the use of unsymmetric n tosyl piperidine derived hydrozones, we could place a nitrogen atom at each point on the six-membered ring following separation of diastereomers. We could also utilize tetrahydropyran derived hydrozones and use a cinnamyl group instead of owl for the cyclization reaction. When we used a cyclopentane derived hydrozone, we now see greater reaction efficiency, presumably due to the higher temperature allowing for cyclization in ring systems with higher strain. We found that six and seven membered rings could also be coupled in good yields, as well as diethyl substituents being tolerated in moderate yield at 61% isolated yield. We wanted to showcase the functional group compatibility of our hydrozone cross coupling reactions with complex pharmaceutically relevant aryl bromides. We found that we were able to take an intermediate in the synthesis of canagliflozin and couple a vinyl cyclobutane in good yield and high diastereoselectivity. We also found that we were able to use this pyridine-containing compound from Sigma Aldrich's API library in good yields and good diastereoselectivity. We could also incorporate alkylidine cyclobutanes into complex systems, as shown with this derivative of endomethacin methyl ester and this derivative of diazepam which highlights the amenability of this reaction in late stage functionalization contexts. We can readily functionalize our vinyl cyclobutane products through osmium mediated oxidative cleavage of the alkene to afford the following cyclobutyl aldehyde. We can then take this intermediate and subject it to pinic oxidation conditions to afford the carboxylic acid or reductive amination to yield the spirocyclic fluorinated phenethylamine compound in 71% yield. Additionally, we are able to rapidly generate polyspirocyclic compounds through functionalizations of our alkylidine cyclobutanes. When subjected to MCPBA, we can form the spirocyclic epoxide on the left in moderate yield in DR, as well as the spirocyclic cyclopropane on the right using Simmons-Smith cyclopropanation in just two steps from the hydrozone reagent in aryl bromide. Having explored the cross-coupling reactivity of these alkene-tethered hydrozone reagents, we return to our proposed mechanism to further probe the reactivity of our proposed palladium carbene intermediate. Specifically, what variables govern product selectivity for cross-coupling versus CH insertion, as well as what other products might we be able to access from this palladium carbene intermediate? We found that when adding 2-bromonethylene as a cross-coupling partner, we see competitive aromigration migration into the carbene, resulting in cross-coupled product and CH insertion in about a 1 to 1 ratio at 80 degrees C. The ratio increases to about 2 to 1 when heated to 50 for 48 hours. When we utilize an electron deficient beta bromoenone in the coupling reaction at 50 for 48 hours, we see trace amounts of the cross coupled product and we turn on CH insertion reactivity, presumably due to slow group migration from palladium into the carbene. When we don't include a vinyl or aryl bromide, instead of CH insertion, we see high selectivity for the direct cyclopropanation of the pendant alkene to afford 210 bicyclopentanes, which we confirmed the structure of through single X-ray crystallography. These results describe a reactivity profile of the proposed palladium carbene where the product distribution is determined by migratory aptitude of the group on palladium. With aryl bromides, competitive aryl migration leads to cross-coupled products. Groups with low migratory aptitude favor CH insertion, and when no migrating group is present, we observe direct cyclopropanation. With that, I would like to wrap up by talking about how we have investigated the cross-coupling reactivity of allyl and crotal substituted hydrozones as bench-stable reagents and their applications in the synthesis of spirocyclic cyclobutanes. We found that the cross-coupling conditions tolerated a wide range of aryne and heteroaryne electronics, which could be used for the rapid generation of a diverse library of spirocyclic cyclobutanes. We also demonstrated applications of this methodology in late stage functionalization contexts through the coupling of our hydrozone reagents and complex APIs. We also have begun investigating palladium carbene reactivity in the form of CH insertions and cyclopropanation reactions, and studies are ongoing in this area. I would like to thank the group and SID for his mentorship, as well as a thanks to Dr. Josh Chen and the UNC X ray crystallography core. 
If you'd like to read more about this work, please check out the paper reference below and our group website for the most up-to-date information on research and news in the group. And a final thank you to Matt Horwitz and Synthesis Workshop for the invitation to share my work with you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Isaiah for sharing your story with us. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.